Get married, polycule, sex, cult, harem, whatever it may be. <laughs> if you're single, how long have you been single? And what's the longest relationship you've ever been in? Go ahead. Uh, I'm in a relationship currently. We've mm -hmm. been together for a little over a year and plan to get um, married next month. And my longest relationship was like seven years. Seven years. Okay. And you're 26, right? Yeah. Uh, and you've been in a new relationship for one year, you said? Yeah, a little over one year. From what age to what age was your seven-year relationship? Uh, it was like on and off the last three years, uh, 15 to 22. And it was on and off again? For like the last two years. How many times was it? Uh, we would take like six months breaks. How many times total? Was it off and on? Two times. Two times? So like a year off, Who yeah. would end things? Hmm? Who would end things? Sorry, what? You said it was an on again, off again. Oh, yeah. We would just break up because we have a daughter. So it, we oh, broke up. Okay. Yeah, I have a child. So we broke up for like six months and then we got back together for a year and then uh, we broke up again and that was it. Okay. Uh, and you had a child how long into the relationship? Um, actually, when we broke up when I was like 16, I got pregnant. So two years into the relationship or something like that. Oh, you got pregnant at uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Does he pay child support? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just curious how much. Not anything. Oh, he he doesn't. That's why I danced because he barely pays anything. I just got it raised to like seventy dollars. It used to be thirty-seven dollars a month. Okay, all right, and um, that's your only kid. Yeah. Okay. Do you want more kids? Or? Yes. Okay. And but uh, but but hang on, just to just to ask, um, with such a low number, does he have joint physical and legal custody then? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. He yeah, so he gets be. so hang on, so he gets the kid every other week or weekend or something like that. Yeah, some it's like a weird joint. Um, it's like a weird yeah. split. It's like a five two five. Yeah, so I mean, why should he pay child support? That's <laughs> right. Like, why why should he? he uh, I pay for insurance. I pay for all her dental care that comes out of pocket. I pay for all of her school clothing. Her school, like, I pay for everything. He he literally at this point is living in a one bedroom with my daughter and but, his girlfriend. But does he have does he have uh, half half the custody though? Yeah, and I does I feel, he have her half the time? Is my question. Uh, currently, yeah, but he can't. Yeah, so I mean, if he has her half, half, half the time, why why would he need to pay you support? Just just you know, like that's that isn't isn't that absurd to make the request that if the father has the kid half of the time? They're already taking care of of uh, of half of the child's rearing, right? Most of, like I said, I pay for most of her clothes, most of everything, even when she's at his house. Wait, is it fifty okay. fifty custody? Yeah. But the yeah. time the timeshare is not fifty fifty. No, is? it is. It is. It's oh. fifty fifty time. But what I'm saying is, like, I pay for a majority of her health care, everything like that. Like, it's not. It shouldn't. As, it, he should have less time. Is what I'm saying. Wait, is it, uh, it's, and it's gone through the court system? Yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, like the four years ago, three years ago when we who, broke up. Who brought it to court? You or him? I did. You did? Yeah. And you were, um... Because he wasn't seeing her at the time. He wasn't spending any time with her. I see. Okay. And then, uh, you said, unfortunately, he gets... 50%, yeah. Why is it, why is that unfortunate? Don't you uh, want... No, I would love for him to spend time with her, but I, it's unfortunate because it's not like used productively and he's just not i don't feel like taking care of her as best as he could mm -hmm. so, so it's a damn good thing that you that uh women in this situation don't get to make that adjudication because um from the perspective of many women they're always going to think that they're the better caretaker than the man we have no demonstration of evidence to the contrary, and there's no way for us to have any demonstration to the contrary. But if he has 50% custody, then I think that whatever argument that you have for needing child support goes out the window anyway. Well, I just feel like the court system pities a single father sometimes, um, especially As when well they... they should. Hail and been... well met. Lol Paladins donated $200 and two cents. Yo, Remember, fellas, you, 50 to 50, and it doesn't matter how broke you are, she will keep coming after your last $37 a month. She is all women, and she will blame you for it in public. Yo, Lol Paladins, thank you, man. There's another one coming in right now, so I'll just preempt it. Good to see you in the chat, Lol Paladins. Thank you for the TTS, man. 50 50, and it doesn't matter how broke. Have you ever paid him child support? Yeah, uh, they tried. <laughs>
Hillary Epstein donated $200. Thank you, Hillary. Appreciate it. U.S. court system sucks. Divorced dad, 50-50 custody 223 schedule. $1,750 a month and truly 50-50. Are you in California? Ridiculous. Hillary, where, where are you at? California's pretty bad. Um, sorry to hear that, man. Um, you, he was, you were going to have to pay him child support? Yeah, he had requested it at one point for me to pay child support. He had, like, gone to welfare and asked for all this help because he just didn't want to get a job. Yeah. Because if he doesn't have a job, they can't take money from him. And was he awarded child support? No, because I had proof he was working under the table as a security guard. Well, but, like, weren't you making all this money, too? Um, this was at a time where I wasn't, like, I wasn't dancing as much or doing... I didn't... Ha this was way before that but, whole I mean, you said this situation. guy gave you, like, you dated him for two years, right? Yeah, it was the, before the situation. Before the kid? No, before the, um, like, I guess, sugar daddy or whatever you want to call him, fake fiancé. The fake fiancé was... Af that was after. After what? After we had gone to court and everything. <clears throat> oh, okay. Like, after he tried to take me to court to get him to pay... To get me to pay him. But, I mean, were you... Because, I mean, there's assessments when it comes to child support. Were you reporting to the court this... Dancing money? Yeah. In the state of California, no, but the, but you the get paychecks. This, the, the money this guy was giving you. Oh, yeah. I... I have. I mean, uh, okay. Apple pa Apple Cash like reports what you make. But if you guys are 50-50, why aren't you paying him child support? If it, it sounds like you would have been out earning him. You said you made $250,000 over the course of two years. Mm -hmm. I mean... Unless... That's just like an estimate because that's also including like what he spent on shopping and my me getting my boobs done and all of that. Sure. But you said you would like... Send You'd get his phone. You'd mm -hmm. send yourself like five thousand dollars in total out of everything, because like just my breasts were like fifty thousand dollars. Is that the cost of titties? I went to like a really well-known doctor in, in Beverly Hills, which okay, yeah. So I mean, it doesn't. It was like all together, like close to two hundred and fifty. Okay, all right. Well, she also said that he knew she was taking the money. Yeah, like he, thank you, he knew. It's not like he didn't know. Like he would see like, oh, I sent you $2,000. Like, okay, what did you send that for? And I'd be like, oh, I need to pay this. He's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to give you money like next week or something. And then. Well, well yeah, because you were supposed to be his future wife. So he's taking care of you. <laughs> okay, but right? if we really go based off of that, he was also talking to other women. So it's like. And I would like to add, you, do you not think a 52-year-old man knows what's happening with a 22-year-old girl? He knows what he's paying for. But oh, he wasn't really? getting you anything. Know that, wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. Just to get this right. If the burden of evidence was that this gentleman just, okay, had not... Ahead. Hang on. If, mm -hmm. the, if the burden of evidence hey, was and well met. had not... Lol Paladins donated $200 and two cents. Seriously, Brian, you think she reported the 250k <laughs> no, in cash not. to the IRS? The men aren't the only people she scams. The government is a victim too. All right. <laughs> And Thank I can see that the, the sisterhood of accountability is uh, driving right in here, right? Sisterhood can't take accountability. It's, uh, it's, it's against their nature. So, but, to, but to dive in, can you explain to me how this man was not victimized by this woman? Can you explain that to me? I'm not saying I think this was... No, 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 not I, you. He's I'm talking to me. I think you're being really dramatic by using the word victimized because oh, he oh, does... Okay. I, I, he I, did oh, know I, she was taking the money and he was willing, he was willing I know, was, was to she, take it. Uh, taking and the money under pretenses? I don't know. I don't know the I don't know him. What, what did but she just what I'm say? saying is I'm she, she literally said he was taking she was taking money under false pretenses and called it a scam. I think she, she was talking. She, I think she was talking about what do you, what do you her. Think scam so means? wait, would what do you it be think fair means? if I was having sex with him? Yeah, no, I would care still. But can you can but you explain to me real quick? Fair if what, I was having okay, can, sex can you with let him? us finish our conversation? What do you think scam means? What do you think that means? Do you think that means I'm being very truthful about my intentions, or do you think it means something else? No, you're not being truthful. Yeah, you're not being truthful. So wait, would you call that false pretenses? I guess so, but what I'm saying yeah, I is I think that there are segments of men that understand that what they are paying for and that this is the situation that because they are paying for attention. How do you somehow manage 
to ma manage to do the mental gymnastics necessary after she tells the entire story, explains it herself as a scam, says she took this money under false pretenses to still somehow try to justify it as her being the victim. I'm not saying she's the victim. Well, you I did, think because what you, you were, started you were, this by saying this. You started this entire engagement by saying he knew exactly what he was doing because he's 53 years old, implying that she's actually being victimized here. I didn't exactly say that. What I said is, do you not think that he doesn't, he may not know that, or he may not understand that that's what he was paying for? But what I'm saying is there are segments of men that do pay for attention. Yes. From younger sure women. There are, Older but, men okay. pay for attention from younger women. Do you, do you agree that they, there are segments of men who eat watermelon? Do you agree sure. with that statement? Yeah, okay, great. What the fuck does that have to do with scamming a man? What What is saying there are segments of men who do X have anything to do with the current conversation that we're having. She's talking about scamming her clients at the strip club. She did say she was scamming, she had a mm -hmm. fake fiance. So mm -hmm. her pretense was to not marry the man. But what I'm saying is let's consider maybe he knew what he was paying for as well. That's all I'm saying. He but knew. I, okay, it's, it's really funny though. He knew Why he is was it that this needs wrong. to be looked at in the best light from the interest of the woman instead of in the interest from the man. That's my question to you. Why should we instantly look at this as some sort of, well, he's 53. I'm sure he, I'm sure he didn't, uh, you know, he, he knew. He knew exactly what was going on. Why should we assume that? Why should we assume that a person who then who makes the claim that they knew it was done under false pretenses because took I am this amount of money? So what do you think his incentive was to do that? Although I, this may be anecdotal, but I am 52 and I speak to a lot of 52 plus year old men that do tell me that they date younger women, pay for their bills because that's, they feel like that's the rite of passage because after they get divorced, they want to go and feel like they're, they want their ego stroked and they want to be with a young girl. Oh, well, let me give you some anecdotes back. Having talked now to hundreds upon hundreds of women on this podcast, let me explain that there are many women who are in their early 20s who constantly seek out older men specifically for the purposes of capturing their resources and they're in complete control. They are in total control and they often do it under false pretenses. And then when they're called out on the false pretenses for which they have done this under, the sisterhood all gets together and makes excuses for her. Why do you think that is? Why does the sisterhood all get together to make excuses for scam artist women? Can you explain that to me? I'd actually like to know the answer to that. I'm speaking for myself. Yeah, and I'm speaking I know. I'm speaking for to you about men. yourself. I know, and I'm speaking... I'm not... You know what? I am defending her a little bit because you are coming down really hard on her, and we're not taking in consideration that the man, and there are men that understand what they're paying for. Ah, but if I may That's jump in, if I may jump in here a little little bit. So, let's just grant that everything that was given willingly was uh copacetic. Although she she does seem to uh concede that there was there was a component of misrepresentation mm -hmm. as to her interest in him because fake husband whatever. Uh but even setting all that aside, she admitted that she would go on his phone while she while he was drunk and without his permission without his consent send his money like to her in what universe are you prepared to actually defend that specific action well she said he to she told him she she so if a woman she gets, told him hold on. and if he a said woman, okay hold on. If a, oh my god fuck Roth Thunder's call PSA donated $200 hello Brian Andrew and the panel Andrew, not in studio, safe from the lint roller. Hope the show is going good. Please don't scam people, you jackal. Defending bad behavior is bad. All right, Rath PSA. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I was... <laughs> Thank you, Rath. Um, so let me ask you a question. If a woman is being victimized in some way, I'll let your imagination run wild, but she knows that she's being victimized, does that change the degree to which she's being victimized? Wow, that's <laughs> uh, that went over my head a little bit. Okay, so, oh, I'm going to use a very extreme example. Okay, here. a woman is in the. I can't believe I'm going to. 
bring it here. A woman's being essayed, but she knows she's being essayed, so it's okay? Essayed? Uh, oh, 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 okay. She's being essayed. Okay, got it. Yeah. She knows she's being essayed. Does that make it okay? No. Mm. So in this situation where this man is essentially, I don't know if it's uh, wire fraud, if it's uh, what kind of th theft exactly, the legal term for what's going on, she's going on his phone without his permission. It's theft, grand theft. This is f felony level money that's being moved around here. <laughs> Grid one motorsports donated two hundred dollars like and one new cent. One. I said that as up. a fifty-three year male, you disgust me. A scam is a scam is a scam, and you forking know it. The fact you charlatans defend this sort of actions is what sets women as a whole back in all men's eyes. Be better. All right, grid one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. So again, like he. She claims, we don't know his story, she claims he was aware of this. But then, if he was aware of this, why, why would she need to secretly do this? Couldn't you just have asked for money instead of having to secretly go on his phone and just like well, send yourself Well, because he money? wasn't getting sex, like he would sometimes be more greedy, obviously. Wait, I don't see how that's relevant at all. Well, because he, I would ask for the money and he'd be like, oh, well, like, you know, you don't even want to like kiss me. You don't even want to like make out with me. So like, I don't, I don't know. Like I already sent you like this or that. And then the next day, if he, he would see the transactions, he wouldn't like ever get mad or about it or like ask me like, why did you do that? He'd be like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like, you know, if you're going to, uh, yeah, you did ask me for the money. I didn't want to give it to you. Like here, you already have it. This seems a bit dubious, but in any case, you did seem to... Again, this man this knew is a, what he was well, doing. Well, this is a post hoc justification. So he said no, and then he took it anyway. And then after you took it, he's like, well, okay. <laughs> after you, so he's like, this it's is, better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> this is like a man that was, like I said, he was spending money to like other women in other countries. He was the type of guy that flies to Columbia to just get some pussy. How does I that, that? I don't understand. Let's say for a second he was a serial killer. That's what he did on the side, and you discovered this. How would him being a serial killer justify your actions? Okay, say I wasn't me, and I was an innocent bystander, or an innocent girl that actually wanted to be in a relationship with him, and he's going off of this pretense of, like, I want to be your husband, I want to get married, and he's having sex with her, all the things, but he's still talking to these other women in Colombia. Like, if it yeah, weren't going to be... Wrong. Yeah, hey, that would listen, be wrong. that would be, that would so be my, wrong. And was that what was happening? My perspective of it was that, okay, you're going to either do all the, like, the extra stuff you do to someone else... Or I can just get, like, kind of, you know, what I Here, need out of me, the situation. Let me engage directly. Yes, if you were an innocent bystander and you were looking to have some kind of great, healthy relationship with this guy and you really were in love with him and you were doing everything right and he was off gallivanting all over Colombia, humping prostitutes, then, yes, that would be completely and totally wrong. And that exactly was not happening in this case, was it? Yeah, but you guys clearly do not understand, like, the caliber of man he was was not one of, like, honor. He was Can clearly a dog. Can I ask a question? Like, what oh, the hell I see. did this so, guy do so, for so it just make, 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 um, this is all, he, But this is all justifying bad behavior, right? He, when does the Christian part come out? When does the Christian part come out? Instead of the justification, where does the responsibility portion come out? Oh, I've taken my responsibility of this already with him, like... No, all you do is making justifications for how horrible he was and that he deserved it. He yeah, actually deserved I'm, it. I right? am making I'm making justifications for how I was acting at that time, but like that is not currently me and that is not currently how I believe anyone should be behave or act or do that to like I feel wrong for what I did. I'm not saying I don't, just because I'm trying to have you understand where I was and what I was doing. Like, yeah, at that time, I didn't see it as wrong. I didn't care. I didn't care about him. I cared about surviving. I was selfish. I was living for myself. I've already said that. Like, yeah, I did not give a fuck about him or how he felt. Like, I didn't. I justified so it in my head at that time. So the who who was responsible for this? Yeah, I did take advantage of him. But at the same yeah, time... Yeah, so you were responsible. There's no at the same time. Just you were responsible. Your actions... You were responsible. Without you, none of this would have happened, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, going back to you, um, I'm just a little confused. He knew, but 
I, You're trying sure. to make it sound like I need to say that it was his fault. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm saying let's get, consider maybe he knew what the situation was. That's all I'm saying. We see it all the time. You talk. You have all your podcast guests come on and talk about it all the time. Men, there are a lot of men out there that pay for attention from young girls or any woman, any attractive woman, or anyone that will even pay attention to them is all I'm saying. Well, yes, they do it, but there's two components here. There's the component of she's leading them on with absolutely zero intention of any, any romantic or sexual attention being received by him at any point. Um, and then there's the component of there's, again, even if granting all the willing money that he sent her is copacetic, totally fine, there's still the component of she went on his phone and was like sending herself money from his phone. But he was fine with that. But i that's what I'm going based off of. Her saying, I would tell him, he said, that's fine. Well, that's this what seems I'm like, going based off Like, if it would be of. a real problem, he probably would have already, like, tried to take me to court or, you know, press charges or mm, something. Well, I have to push back on this because... Uh, how many women stay with abusive men? Just because the women stay with abusive men does not justify the abuse that the woman is going through. Well, she, I mean, she stayed with him, so she didn't go to court or anything or didn't go to the police, but he was smacking her around. So, I mean, she was okay with it, I get. Does that make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense. So where he's going to is... Um, because you're saying, oh, he was a dirtbag, he deserved it, right? The guys in the strip club are gross, they deserve it. I'm not saying the guy deserved it. I'm only saying let's open up the possibility that he understood what he was paying for and what was going on. But then why? Because it happens all the time. Okay, listen, I, I agree with you, okay? So let me, let me give you a little bit of, um, of like uh, an olive branch here. I agree with you that there are men who exist in this world who, in that situation, would have known that that was going on. You have zero evidence that that was the case. Zero. None. Zilch. And hang on, because you have zero evidence that that was the case, you should not leap to that assumption. What it looks like is you're deflecting on behalf of somebody else in order to protect somebody else based on zero evidence whatsoever that that is the case, when all the evidence we've heard tonight is to the contrary. I feel like he is someone that is used to spending money on women to have sex and to get what he wants out of them. And the fact he knew I was abstinent at the time, um, I feel like the whole, oh, let me marry you, like proposing to me was just a just thinking it would get us closer to intimacy. And that was on the third date because he knew that nothing was happening. I hadn't kissed him. I hadn't done nothing with him. And at this time, he was already spending $4,000 on me on the second time we hung out shopping. Like, he expected things to happen very early on that weren't happening. And I feel like, you know, I told him, like, I'm not having sex until I get married. Like, I just don't want to have sex with anyone like that because I started getting closer into, like, my faith of knowing, like, my worth. And I just didn't want to, like, entangle myself with a bunch of people anymore at that point. Wait, you were, just to be clear, how long ago was this relationship? Um, This started when I was, like, about to turn 23. And you said you were waiting until marriage to have sex. Mm-hmm. So you've been celibate for the past four years? Um, I was celibate until earlier last year. What happened to waiting until marriage? Uh, I fell into a really dark place in my life. That, needed, well, he was that going, needed to be fixed by sexual intercourse? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I was... I was I feel like a lot of men can agree when you needed your ego stroked. I needed my ego stroked. I was, like, not dancing anymore. He was no longer paying for anything. I was kind of, like, really losing myself again. And so, yeah, I had sex with someone. And Just him? That's the only guy you've one had person. Um, sex with? One person. And then with. several months later, I started dating my now boyfriend. And you've had sex with him? Uh, yeah, but we've been, like, on and on abstinent trying to not... When's the last time you had sex? Um, Yesterday. No, I want to say like in June. Okay. <laughs> and then uh. before that, it was like a month <laughs> without having sex. Oh, uh, so hey guys, so how long have you been abstinent? 
It was three years until last, like, January. So. Then you, but you just needed your ego stroke. Yeah, I was going through some difficult things. And then when were you, when were you baptized? Last year. Was this before you uh, decided to throw the abstinence out of the window? I was already dating my now boyfriend. Yeah, so but it was before you threw the abstinence out the window. No, it was it was after. So you were baptized afterwards. Yeah, I was I was yeah. baptized after I started dating my now boyfriend. Couple mm-hmm. questions. And your your and, and your now boyfriend, are you you're still engaged? And is this your now boyfriend? Yeah. Well, then you're yeah. and and you're are you engaged in a sexual relationship with this person as well? I like I said, we're trying to like stay abstinent until we get married. Trying, trying is a very strange. That's a strange. Trying is a very yeah, because it's it's really hard when you both lust after each other and you're trying to uh, like abstain from having sex when you obviously have a physical craving. That's just what flesh is. You want that intimacy. Yeah, no, I I understand all that. My my direct question to you is: Are you engaged in a sexual relationship with your current boyfriend? Yeah, but we haven't had sex in like a month. In a month. Wait, so... Or when was June? That was did ago? Your current, So you said there was like a guy who you had a short fling with and a guy you've been in a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Um, did they have to spend... Like, no. have they spent money on you? Well, my boyfriend made me a stay-at-home girlfriend, but that's only for the purpose of like we are very... Um, uh, what's the word? We're very like... I can't think of the word right now. We're just, we know what we want to do moving forward with our <laughs> Grid One Motorsports donated $200 Yo, and one. one cent. As the Hawk Tua girl said recently, what fills the hole often does not fill the soul. So choose wisely words to live by. From one degen to all of you degens. Okay. <laughs> I saw that interview. That was kind of funny. Um, thank you, Grid One. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, Wait, and like, just curious, the, so there's the, the fling, you said it was kind of an ego thing for you, right? Yeah. Just, so like, was it a, like a one night stand? Like you met him in the bar? How did no, they... uh, we met and we went on a couple dates and then he went back cause he wasn't from here. He went back to where he lives, which is, uh, the UK. And then we were like talking for several months and then I ended up how, going out there to see him. How soon into the, like, was it the first date, second date that you guys hooked up or? Um... I want to say the third day because he was leaving. So me, I was just thinking like you're leaving, and right. yeah. And what about the current boyfriend? First date, second date, third date. Um, it was it was the first date, but I wasn't like again. I that was like right after each other, not right after each other. That sounds gross. Wait, it so, wasn't like so he's back going to back, back to the UK. And it then was how soon did you meet the the new guy? Um, like March. Wait, so, uh, so I met the new guy January. I met my boyfriend. We started, no, April. We started talking in April. Wait, you met the British guy. Is he British? Yeah. yeah. You met him in January? Mm-hmm. And then he was leaving. So, okay. He, he when came did he here leave? for like two weeks. He, he was here when for two did he weeks. Leave? I met him like several days before he left. When like, did he leave? January? January, yeah. And then you met your now boyfriend in April? Yes. Last April, yeah. Okay, this was like time. last year, yeah. Well, hold on. I mean, this two year guy. I'm waiting till marriage, da 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 da. Yeah. But the two most recent men that you've had sex with, one was he was leaving soon, and there was absolutely no prospects of long term relationship because he was. I leaving. thought there would be. I was like, okay, retarded. Was oh, I can't say that. That's um, okay. I was, I was, yeah, no, I was, I was like I said, I was like in a low place, and I was like not yeah. thinking. I was just thinking for my ego. And, and but then your current boyfriend, first night. First yeah, because I was, again, like, I was not in the greatest place. I thought I was going to... Weren't you in a bad place when you were dating the... Yeah, it was the, a long period of, like, year I was losing everything. But why does the 53-year-old get, I'm waiting till marriage, and then, like, these guys, first date, second date, third date? Um, that's why I'm confused. Well, because he's 53, I met him at a strip club, and that's kind of what the whole aspect of it was from... The whole like yeah. So you were you were using him? Yeah, I've said yeah. that. I don't know why you guys keep yeah, asking prospects. it like it's because a because because question. it's a post hoc. I'll tell you why we keep we we we, we kind of keep getting confused. Keep getting confused because the post hoc justification, meaning every single time you kind of take responsibility for this and say yes, I was using him and this and that, you give us this qualifier. 
qualifiers for that. And this, it's a series of qualifiers that are bothersome, right? Yeah, I'm responsible, but he kind of had it coming. Yeah, I'm responsible, but he knew what was going on. Yeah, I'm responsible, but yeah, I'm responsible, but yeah, I'm responsible, but that's why that's why it's confusing because the question really is in this particular case, if you're using this guy and you scam this guy and you did all these you know horrific things to this guy, we're, the, myself and the entirety of the audience is actually confused as to how this isn't just really just kind of your fault and that you're just kind of playing fast and loose with the idea of, well, I didn't want to lower my morality. It doesn't seem like it had much to do with morality. You just didn't want to screw him because he was 53, right? <laughs> like, isn't that what was going on? Well, I just saw him as like, like a trick. Like he was just some guy from the club. The guy that I had met from the UK was I met him at a nightclub. I never go out like that, and so it was it to me at the time felt very destiny, stupid. Like it was dumb. It was very dumb, and like I said, ego driven. And in that time of like, I was slowly starting to let go of the fifty three year old. I was letting go of dancing. I had no money. It was a fat ego stroke for me to like completely changed my life within like a matter of like three months four months it's not something and I think that's kind of like what I was trying I guess to bring to the show is that like I feel like you guys interview a lot of girls and don't realize like getting out of the fast money is not easy and it's really hard to do that gracefully and even like you're you're saying like you know I'm not taking ownership I'm taking ownership 100% that I what I did was wrong restitution he doesn't want anything like back. How he's do you still know? trying to give me Have money. You asked him? Yeah, he doesn't. He's still trying to give me money. Wait, so Andrew, I think we gotta also just address like. He knows this, I have a boyfriend. He knows that like. This guy ain't perfectly this. like. Uh, how do I how do I frame this? Like he's a sucker. He's a sucker and a simp. Like, bro, you should, as a dude, you should not be spending, I don't care if you're trying to bag like a younger girl, like a younger woman, whatever, like you can't be spending this kind of money on, on a chick. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm not willing to go the what about the Mendo argument. In this case, I see somebody who's clearly been victimized and has clearly been victimized multiple crimes. And even if right sure, now this person is still pining after this woman, this was all done under a false uh, assumption of a potential for some type of long-term relationship by her own admission so even the feelings, which he could be feeling right now, uh, he may not ordinarily have had if he was not let on. So I'm, I'm just not willing to put the ball back in his court for responsibility just yet. Based oh, on I'm, not, I'm not like saying that there's no, uh, there's no blame on her, but I'm saying like you meet a stripper in a strip club, uh, or even if you meet a normal woman, you should not be spending this sort of money uh, on a woman like I would say this to any guy I would say this to any dude like you shouldn't be spending this kind of money <coughs> so she's I'm not saying she's like yeah I, I agree I, so I agree with you in spirit but let me kind of make uh, just a bit of a counter rebuttal here um, so grandma gets called by a scammer at Target goes down to Target spends $500 on gift cards gives them to the scammer you would tell grandma not to do that, right? You'd say, grandma, you're getting suckered and this and that. But who's the victim there? The grandma. The grandma. You wouldn't tell grandma that, you know, grandma it was, was um, you know, you wouldn't beat up on grandma, in other words, right? You would tell grandma, like, look, you can't be doing this. This is bad for you to do. But you're doing that so that they avoid being suckered in the future, not because they themselves are doing something which is immoral or wrong. Well, let, so let me ask you this, though, Andrew. So... I'm sure you would agree that there are some scenarios where men are, they have, they have agency yeah. and they're just willfully giving women this sort of money. Yeah. Sims, and, yeah. and so I, there's certainly a hundred percent like the grandma example, it's a scam. There's women who are doing running love scams on men, but there are also men who are inclined to just give this money away to women who the women themselves, I'm not saying that's even the case for her. The women themselves are not necessarily uh, angling to scam the guy. So there are men who will just like the woman's not asking for it. They'll just like 
they'll be soliciting essentially this sort of dynamic. Um, I agree. And you're talking about the pay pick phenomenon, which we've so often kind of uh, run into on this program with these women. However, I'm not convinced in this case that that is what's going on. And I haven't, as I'm kind of piecing this together from the story, I'm not, that's not what I'm hearing here. I'm hearing that this guy is moving towards, now she says that, that she thinks that he's moving towards, um, I want to marry you so that she'll be physically intimate with him. And perhaps that's true, right? But it could also be the case that he did, just wanted a long-term relationship with her. I have no idea. There's no way for us to, to know that for sure. What we do know for sure, though, is that uh, he did not want to give her some of his money, and she would just transfer it to herself, and then later he would just say, well, fine, I guess since you did it, there's nothing I can do about it, and, you know, that's that. So I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he's done, which is wrong here. You know what I mean? Well, it's hard to say without knowing the full details. We're only getting, I agree. We're only getting one side of it. I imagine there's some degree of, of nuance here. Um, I mean, look, the, this grandma example, I, I don't know if that maps on 100% one-to-one because typically, typically, you know, with these, uh, these older people, they'll call them up and they'll specifically target like much more elderly people, 70s, 80s, and they'll say, um, your, son, your grandson, your son's in jail, we need you to wire this money to us, blah, blah, blah. Oftentimes these elderly people are, have early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, perhaps not fully developed, but very early on. A 53-year-old man, I think, would have a little more agency in this situation than, say, for example, a 73-year-old man. Um, again, I'm not excusing what she's, what she's done here, but to go into a strip club and be like, I'm going to wife up a stripper, you're fucking up. Like, you shouldn't do I, that. Look, you shouldn't I, do I that. Don't... I, I totally agree with you that that is a bad choice for you to make long, from a longevity point of view. But, Brian, you can't actually say that there's something immoral about it. It's not actually immoral. On the man's it, part? Maybe, yeah, to, to wife up a stripper. It's not no. immoral to do. It's no, just it's a bad stupid. idea. It's a bad idea. Yeah, so just like, so I think in the grandma analogy, it's the same thing, right? Grandma, it's a bad idea to let these scammers take advantage of you. You know what I mean? Grandma sure. stopped doing that. Yes. But grandma still got scammed, right? Mm. She still got scammed, and the scammers got the gift card. So it's like, I'm not sure what to beat this guy up over other than being stupid. Right? That's, that's what I'm doing. That's, all that's I'm doing. it. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. He's just he is very stupid. That's the yeah, extent stupid. of it. I'm certainly not uh, trying to downplay. I mean, at least by the, own, the admissions that have already been made, I think there's... Um, plenty to find fault no offense uh in terms of the conduct from no uh, yeah i totally the lady take over ownership here, but, of what i did um in any case um i do i i've got to get through the relationship statuses maybe we'll get back to I it think, I, I think that's one of the first times me and brian have had kind of a significant disagreement on the show and, and hashed it out like that it's a i mean there's been other times i guess but well i don't know that, if we totally disagree no, I think ultimately we do agree. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to excuse the conduct here. I'm just saying, like, buyer beware to some degree. I guess. Well, the um, the problem I have with this is I and I see this all the time, and it's it's blame shifting. It's the blame shifting that drives me crazy, right? It's like, as men, we understand that we can go to other men and say, "Look, you're fucking up. You're stupid." Um, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you a smack to the back of the head. You know what the what they do in the the old school writing? You're going to get cuffed, right? You're going to cuff you. Um, you know you you got to stop fucking up, dude. You're you're out of your mind. Stop doing this shit. But men do that and correct each other. Whereas what I saw here tonight was just sisterhood stuff, right? Which is just kind of shifting and saying, yeah, you know, girl, you didn't, yeah, it's okay. You know, there's all sorts of men who are like that. You do you, you're in a dark place. It's okay. It's always kind of this shift. And that's why I'm not so willing to kind of um, move into the, yeah, this guy's a fucking idiot and he kind of, you know, had it coming or this. I'm not really willing to give them that because I don't see uh, the women kind of pushing on their end for the responsibility taking aspect. And it's like, if they're not going to do that, I don't know why we have to be so damn charitable to them. Oh, I, I don't think I was being charitable. 
I don't think I was being charitable. No, no, no not you. I'm not oh, saying okay. you. I'm, I'm okay. just saying that um, this is this is why I take kind of uh, issue with sisterhood is because um, it seems that men are trying to correct, and I just see kind of excuse making on the mm. uh, the women's side most often on these sure. podcasts. I'm sure. And Andrew, by